This is a video about Shirobindo, Spal Dynamics and Enlightenment. Hello, this is Chris speaking, Wake Up, and today a video about if Spal Dynamics can be used as a model to describe enlightenment. We know that it is a model that can describe the growth and development of personality individually and especially collectively, but how about awakening and enlightenment with the example of Shirobindo. For this we need the full spectrum, the full six colors of the second tier which have been so far only described by Ken Wilbur. So in summary there is a first tier and a second tier. The first tier is beige, purple, red, blue, orange, green and the second tier yellow, turquoise, coral, teal, plum, clear light or indigo, violet, ultraviolet and clear light. SD researchers are not unanimous on what they want to call the colors from coral onwards. The first three colors of each tier are about survival. The first three colors of the first tier are about physical survival in a hostile environment. While the first three colors of the second tier, yellow, turquoise and coral, are about survival of the soul, in a material world. You're surrounded by people who are only considering their physical body and you're aware that there's more than that. But you're quite alone in that. Culminating in coral or indigo in which you have to face all your childhood demons, your cultural demons, religious demons, brainwashings, conditionings and so on. Then the second half of each tier is about a larger perspective, either collectively or even beyond that. In the first tier it is about personality development and also group consciousness. Culminating in green, where you see that this is not the end actually, this can't be it. And green tries to convince everyone by revolutionary means to see the truth, but it can't because its truth is incomplete. Then follows the first three colors of the second tier with introspection and honesty, which leads then to colors four to six of the second tier, which are not anymore about any individual thing but only a larger perspective. And this larger perspective is not anymore humanity. It is the divine plan. Whatever the will of the divine plan is, we follow. There is almost to no personality anymore. Now the trouble with real spiritual teachers like Shurubindu is that at the time of their teaching and writing, when they start to teach and write, they are already at least in teal violet. The fourth color of the second tier where there are about not more than one and a half million people. And then they start writing and it's very difficult to grasp this because they presuppose that you're there as well. To really get what Shirobindo and Meha Baba and these guys wrote, or women, um, it's very practical to be in teal violet yourself. But you're likely to be in blue, green or yellow when you read that. Maximum turquoise. And unfortunately, these guys and girls, they left out how they got there. Which gives lots of room for religious speculations and misinterpretations. In Shirobindo's case, before his spiritual phase, he had a political phase in which he went through all the colors from green to coral. Let's have a closer look. Shirobindo was born in India but raised in Orange Britain. He got the best British education his father could afford and when he returned to India, he immediately felt at home and he worked as a civil servant and had enough time to pursue his 
poetic career and his political career because he saw something is not right here. This is oppression. So he joined the political resistance movement and parallelly he started to study the Vedas and Upanishads, which was his yellow. He even taught himself Sanskrit for that. Then we do not know what his turquoise face was. It is just not known. Tell me if you have an idea about it. But his involvement in the extreme party of Indian resistance against the British Empire landed himself in jail. We do not much know about his coral face personally, about what he had to go through, but he definitely had to go through all kinds of deconditioning of his British upbringing and also the loss of his parents and so on. But anyway, his involvement in the political movement landed him in Alipur jail and there he had his first illumination, which is what I call the love phase. Krishna appeared to him and his consciousness got clearer, which is of course a typical manifestation of teal violet. After he got released, he pursued his spiritual studies even more. And when he was told that he was about to be arrested for a second time, he fled to French India. And even on the boat there, he started writing his first books like The Synthesis of Yoga and The Life Divine. And at that time, he wasn't even in teal violet anymore, but in plum ultraviolet. Later, he started his ashram in Pondicherry and published his books in his magazines chapter by chapter and started at some point also calling himself Sri Aurobindo instead of Aurobindo Ghosh. So how exactly did Aurobindo Ghosh become Sri Aurobindo? How did he get to clear light? the last color of the second tier and beyond, even third tier probably. It is very clear that everyone has to walk their own path and has their own obstacles. But most of you who are listening to this channel are either centered right now in green or yellow or turquoise or coral and you wonder how to move on. It's nice to hear people describe the goal where we would like to be teal and beyond. But it's not very nice of those gurus to have not talked much about how they got there. Of course, the specific journey, the specific details, personal details of the journey are not important. But the steps there, the general steps, obstacles, traps, and so on. And that is why after considering it for many years and also recently a lot and discussing it with friends of mine who are also very fit in spell dynamics, that maybe spell dynamics is a good concept after all because it describes steps and describes also how to not confuse those colors, not to mistake green for yellow or turquoise or not to mistake turquoise for teal which is very common so many people are in teal centered in teal and they think um, that's it now no this is just dipping the toe into the ocean you're not yet back in the ocean you just dipped your toe into it first you have to go through the dreaded coral phase of deep diving and then complete surrender complete surrender giving up your own plans and accepting the higher divine plan without a shred of arrogance because you went through all your shit beforehand in coral so i hope this was helpful to you thank you for liking and subscribing and thumbs up thank you for joining me on facebook or patreon and see you soon Leave your comments below.